Hello everyone, it's Tyler, hello phone, and uh, it's time for the Libroscope, I think I should do more of these, it's difficult because, you know, buying games and all that. Alright, today we're doing an interesting one by the name of Sacred 2 Gold Edition, actually. Why the heck am I doing this? Nah, this game has been out for a while, well, yes, yes and no, this is Sacred 2 Gold, this is a combination of Sacred 2 Fallen Angel, the vanilla game, and Sacred 2 Ice and Blood, which is its expansion, which adds some more areas to the already massive world and some other stuff. But also because it's been recently released on Steam, so this is kind of a Steam release video. So what is Sacred 2? As you can probably see from the isometric perspective, it is an ARPG. Quite a good one at that, it's pretty unique. You'll find a lot of, uh, a fairly heavy PC following of the original Sacred. So, let's get into it, then. Sacred is... It's an interesting beast. When it uh, came out, there were complaints about its interface. As you can see, it's not necessarily the most user-friendly. And uh, also, on consoles, it was difficult to control, but, I mean, this is an ARPG. It's kind of meant to be played on PC. Also, as you can tell, very important. It's got physics effects, so I can blow leaves around. And stones on beaches and all kinds of stuff. It's great. It's actually kind of a pretty game, even though the texture quality isn't super great, but because it's from an isometric perspective, well, you can get away with that. As far as the interface goes, I might as well just explain it really quick. Of course, you've got your sort of character frame with you, your hit points, and your experience for your next level. Now down here, you have relics. You can actually equip three relics at a time. These are passive bonuses, usually armor, and then plus two skills. You can have four different relic sets and switch between them. Also, you have a divine gift because you choose a deity when you first begin. And, uh, whoops. In this case, I chose Florence because it allows me to reflect damage back to people, thereby killing themselves. Here you have your weapon sets. You can equip various sets of weapons. You have these potion sort of hotkeys almost, even though you kind of have to click them. You can hotkey them still. Space is a quick hotkey for just use health potion, so that's useful. And you have your abilities. I have four abilities equipped here. You can just switch through them. Uh, and then over here you have your buffs. This is actually where you put buff abilities. So I'm gonna activate both of them. I've got a familiar, which makes me cooler. Plus it's a cute little Dargon. And I have Runer Protection, which also makes me cooler because it makes my weapon float. There we go, now I'm all shiny. And of course your buttons for going to different menus. You have your mini-map. You can change options of your mini-map and things like that, and you can also tab map. Hold tab and it expands outwards. Now, uh, in classic ARPG fashion, there are lots of enemies on screen at once, pretty often, so it can get a little intense. Now, one very useful feature is this. That little ring right there, you, you press Q or press this button, and it collects everything in the radius. Every piece of loot or gold or whatever that's dropped is automatically collected around you when you press Q. That's extremely handy. More games could use with something like that. I think WoW has something like that, doesn't it? I don't know. I never actually played WoW. Final Fantasy XI was my MMO of choice for years. Alright. Yes, I am a masochist. Thank you. So, we are killing lots of things. As you can tell, I just rescued little Mary from the kobolds because they like to steal children, apparently. I thought they were only into shiny things, but... Well, I guess children can be kind of shiny. There's also a... elk or something. And uh, the, the game's uh, uh, ability system is interesting, so let's show you that. I, I'm a dragon mage, which makes me awesome. There are different classes available. They're also, they're all pretty cool. There's like a high elf, which is a heavy magic user. There's like a dryad, who is of course, you know, kind of druidic or shamanistic, very nature oriented. There's an inquisitor, which is evil and awesome. Uh, a seraphim, which can be a lot of things. There's, there's all kinds of them. And each of them has four, well, I guess technically three, because all of them have combos, have three different categories of abilities. I have dragon magic, elemental magic, and mentalism. So you learn these by finding runes, and you use the runes. And you can also level them up by using more runes, but this increases the cooldown time, and if you do it enough times, the ability becomes less than useful. 
You can also find runes of other classes and sell them or use them at an NPC called a Rune Master to exchange for runes that you can use. Now, there's also this here, the skill system, which is interesting. You, every certain amount of levels, you, uh, one of these slots will free up and you can equip skills. And these skills give you different things and you put points into them. As you can see, I've got pretty high mentalism lore for the level. And level them up and get different things. These are all the skills I have available. So every time one of those slots opens up, I can select one of these and add another type of skill to my sort of repertoire. And, uh, oh, also, if you upgrade the lore of your categories of skills enough, this bar here fills up and it allows you to put a point into an ability and the cool thing is these are mutually exclusive upgrades meaning you can only choose one and then it moves on to the next track i can't have both of these for example so as far as mentalism goes got a point in energy blaze so it blinds my targets next i can choose for it to have more damage actually i think i do have that one yes i do have more damage there's a copper a silver and a gold upgrade Experience lowers the cost and afterglow magical damage over time is increased. I might use that But yeah, that's a cool system because it's it requires you to only choose one of the two available at each tier of upgrades Which is cool And of course the loot system ever important. What did I just do? That I is not inventory apparently I is drink some sort of coke. All right. Yes loot system no weight, but is tile based so you got to do a little bit of um a little bit of loot, sort of, I don't know, you know, inventory Tetris, essentially. Lots of inventory Tetris. So, oh, these are kind of nice shoes. As you can see, it says modifier armor lore. If I actually put points into armor lore, it would be a better piece of equipment, but I don't have that. Also, this will upgrade enhanced perception, but I don't have that skill either. So, they can't upgrade a skill that you don't have. It doesn't automatically give it to you. Let's see, that relic is better than the one I have currently, so we're going to, that is not what I wanted to do at all. There we go. And as you can see there, there's an Inquisitor rune, Dislodged Spirit, which sounds kind of awesome, but I can put that towards a rune that I can actually use. Lots of loot. Most items can be, like most weapons can be used by most classes. It just depends on what you have. I'm specced into magic staves, or staves, as you may have seen, so I'm using those. After you put a point into it, you can actually shoot bolts of energy out of the staff and use it as a ranged and a melee weapon, which is cool. Now, there is a community patch for this game, which I recommend you use, because it is awesome. The game isn't the most stable game in the world. Let's, I mean, I've got to be honest here. Tell you the good and the bad. It isn't super stable. It crashes on a lot of people, and uh, Sometimes people have had uh, save file corruption issues and things like that, and we all know that that isn't fun. But, if you download the community patch, very easy to find, you can find it on the Steam forums. It's actually a Facebook permalink for whatever reason, but I believe the current version is 1.4. But yes, in any case, it's it's awesome. It upgrades the stability of the game, it reduces the memory leak issues, It it's just, it adds stuff. It's almost like a new DLC, basically, but of course it's free. So definitely search for the community patch if you play this game. It makes it a much more enjoyable and stable experience. Also, there are a few tweaks you can apply to the files of the game themselves. I have one, namely the one that makes mobs tend to spawn in larger waves. As you can see, I'm often fighting quite a few cabals at a time, lots of swarms. And this mod helps with that. It helps the mobs, depending on your level and the type of mob, get uh, much larger numbers on you, so it's a lot more fun. If you're used to something like Torchlight or Diablo 2 or something like that, like I am, it's nice to have larger waves of monsters. And also, monsters used to scale with your level to a certain point and then become gray and you overleveled them. But with the community patch, they scale all the time, so monsters in every zone are always uh, minimum your level. Which is cool. That means you never are bored just walking around an area destroying everything with no effort. Now, check this out. This is an impressively sized game. The world map is huge. This is where I am. This is as far as I've explored in my several hours of gameplay time. This is the size of the world. It's... 
it's massive. I mean, it is absolutely huge. It's actually bigger than the world of Skyrim and bigger than the world of Oblivion. Oblivion is actually bigger than Skyrim. I believe Oblivion was about 17 square miles. This is about 22, so it's pretty huge. It's actually a very large world indeed. I have a quest I would like to turn in, so I'm going to teleport. You can have one of these uh, resurrection stones activated at a time, and you'll resurrect there when you die, and also you can teleport to them. You can also find portals, which will allow you to teleport to them without having to mark them, because they're all active at the same time as long as you've discovered them. So, this is the Rune Master. You trade him runes, and he gives you ones that you can use. It's actually absorbently expensive, but if you give him four runes, it only costs 500 gold to get one of whatever you want. Instead of, I think it's like 125,000 or something ridiculous like that if you only give him one rune. So save up those runes. It's worth it. Okay. Also, you can loot fountains for health potions, which is always good. Now, you will have, you know, in classic ARPG style, the stash. In this case, you have a player chest, which is very well textured, and you can put a bunch of crap in it. Also, you have this, just tap X, and you summon up a lovely little imp that carries your stuff for you. He can be a normal stash or a shared stash. I'm not sure if it shares with this or not. I don't think so. But you can call him pretty much wherever you are and he'll pop up. Actually, I'm going to test that really quick. Let's just throw this uh, blade in here. He probably does share with it now that I think about it. It would kind of make sense for him to do so. All right, call up my imp guy. He'll run over to me. And let's see. Hello, imp guy. Yes, it is indeed the same. All right, that makes sense. Off with you, imp. I love you. The various classes in the game are actually extremely varied. There are lots of them, uh, which is good. And the questing sort of experience, which is another thing that you should probably be worried about, is also good. There are lots of quests, like hundreds of quests of various sorts, from just kind of generic kill this, drop that, to more escorty quests like this one I'm on right now, where I'm trying to help little Mary. Let me check my book. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna track that one so I can turn it in. So I guess the person I need to turn it into is over here somewhere? Over there. All right, well, we're gonna walk there. Actually, I'm gonna teleport a little closer. This is the first main city you'll come across. It's called Slowford. And you'll be spending a lot of time here. This is sort of your first hub. This is definitely a very hub-based game. You'll be finding several story hubs here and there. There's another one I'll get to fairly soon, which is a larger city, quite exciting. The city design is interesting. The item art and the item design, notice that all of the items actually do show on your character. Maybe except for rings and amulets. I'm not sure about those, but most of the items show on your character, which is cool. Um, the art of, of those is quite good. It's up there, I would definitely say, with something like Path of Exile. Okay, we need to turn in this quest. Off we go. Get out of the way, Dagron. I love you, but jeez. You can have, I mean, various weapon sets, of course, for various things, because more than likely you're probably going to be specking into at least two different types of weapons. I'll probably spec into either swords or pole arms. I'm thinking swords, maybe? But I'm not sure because my strength isn't super great, and I mean, as a dragon mage, I'm not necessarily focusing on strength. But then again, this game does encourage you to build basically however you want, which is fine with me. Okay, just got this new spell I'm going to try. Also, I can transform into a dragon, because why not? I can't fly, but I can burn people, which is just as good. Okay, the environments is another big point, because that's something that people that played Diablo 3 were kind of disappointed in, was that the environments were very... I'm not necessarily going to say generic, but very samey. There were only a few, and they were... They, they got old very quickly. Hello again, phone. I hear you. But uh, in this case, it's actually extremely varied. You have, you know, your run-of-the-mill forests. You've got your... Uh, jungles, which is different. You've got your deserts, uh, your crazy pathways, uh, ice-bound tundra, mountains, all kinds of stuff. There there are lots of... Uh, there's also a lot of variety 
and the mobs, the loot, you know, it's a variety and an ARPG is important. I'm also going to die. Let's make sure that doesn't happen. So overall, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome, actually. I have a lot of fun with it. I think a lot of people passed it by because they thought it might have been just kind of a cheap ripoff, almost, of, like, trying to get into Diablo 2's fame when it first came out, but... I am here to say that that most certainly is not the case. It is great. If you've never heard of Sacred, you know, I understand if you maybe thought that. However, the game is awesome. You'll be finding lots of cool loot and having lots of fun with it if you give it a shot. Hello, bridge. Might as well complete this quest. As you can see, lots of wildlife. Uh, loads of wildlife. You can apply tweaks to the camera to make it work a little bit differently if you wish, and I wouldn't necessarily blame you. Again, just check the Steam forums for this game. There are lots of helpful links and stuff there. And if you can't find anything, just Google it. I mean, searches will very easily find you what you're looking for. Going to kill everything. I'd like to level up to show you that if I could, but... Welcome to the Celestial Dome, yes. Here's your daughter or whatever. Have fun. Welcome! Oh, we got another quest. Go and visit my husband. What are you... Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Okay then. So where exactly do I go for that? Eastern edge of the village to receive a reward. What am I... I I'm gonna guess I have to like fight him or something. He sold his daughter to the kobolds. It's a twist in the story. How far away is that? That is actually really far away. That is I think towards the next main city. So I'm gonna teleport up there and go in that direction. So we will end this video after we maybe discover some more stuff. All right. I hope this village has a Hello. Oh dear. If people would like to see maybe more content from this game, like if they are particularly interested in it, I wouldn't mind showing periodic content for it because it is fun and it does get quite varied later, so it wouldn't be very samey. It's like, oh, now he's here. So, I mean, if... Again, I, I do take requests on this channel for now. I mean, if people want to see something, I will try and do that. I mean, uh, someone that's just starting out like me can actually afford to take requests because they're not going to get spammed with a hundred billion different things. Like someone more famous, I guess you could say. That's not the best word to use, but you get the idea. I definitely don't blame more popular people for not taking requests, most of them don't, because they would be inundated with tons of requests for the same things over and over, and that would be horrible. But for me, I can actually afford to do that for now, and if people request a Libroscope or a Retrospective or a Mod Spotlight or anything, I will look into it. I definitely will, so feel free to, to do that. I'm trying to build up a subscriber base, I'm trying to, you know, get popular, make good quality content, instead of just throwing out a bunch of samey crap, and, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to get my name out there, but I want to do it in a respectful way, and not just make 10,000 Minecraft videos a day, and, you know, I don't want that kind of following. Nothing against Minecraft. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna go around this way, because, um, I've sort of seen down that way a little bit not on this playthrough but I'm gonna go this way okay I'm pretty close to leveling in fact I think I'll probably pop a potion of the mentor when I get to some more mobs there the music in the game is actually quite good as cheesy rock plays in the background but it, it does actually contain some very ambient tracks some really nice stuff I actually kind of like the soundtrack for this game I'd also like to be able to hit these boars, but they're champions. And they're also painted, which means they're badasses. Alright, kill them. Kill them. Oh, jeez. Alright, you know what this calls for? Transformation. Oh, yeah. This form allows me to steal life. Which is... Oh, it killed me because I bugged that a little bit. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, well, I should have paid more attention and used a potion. Commentating and playing games is actually not the easiest thing I've ever done. Let it be known. Okay, so I'm going to be building this channel. You know, I'm going to be trying. Obviously, I've got content. I've got Dota 2 stuff that I do occasionally, but I don't want to just do the same things over and over. I'm keeping those Dota 2 content specifically for characters I 
I haven't done a video on before, and I also don't want them to just be the only thing I release. I'm trying to release them once every like four or five videos instead of just all the time. Try to do more Lib Libroscopes, more retrospectives, more looks at various things. I, a uh, sort of just play through of a game I may do. When the Dragonborn expansion for Skyrim comes out the 5th, I want to do a Libroscope of it. And if people are interested and would let me know if they're interested, maybe by, say, commenting on that video for me, then I would consider doing a playthrough of the expansion itself. Uh, just the expansion, though. I'm not going to, like, LP Skyrim. That'd be kind of ridiculous. I don't think I could actually pull that off. But, yes, as far as that goes, I'm trying to get my name out there, trying to get more popular, but, again, in a respectful, meaningful way, instead of just kind of cheesing it or whatever. So we'll see. For now, I'm content with slaughtering kabalds and boars. So as you can see in this zone, I'm mostly just fighting, well, kabalds and boars. But there is actually a lot of enemy variety you'll see later on. Uh, even undead things actually have a fair amount of variety and interesting design in this. And oftentimes you see RPGs, especially ARPGs, usually just go for skeleton zombie. But in this case, there's a lot more than that, and even those two things are done in an interesting way. So the style of this game is kind of a high fantasy style, which isn't something that a lot of ARPGs are. They're usually a dark fantasy or a, um, a, a almost like a post-apocalyptic kind of fantasy. And that is a ding, I think. But in this case, they are more than that, definitely. Also, there is multiplayer. You can co-op this game. If you would be interested to know, it is it requires the use of like a third party, a third party client for it. Like say a lot of people use Tungle. I'm not sure if Hamachi would work if the, the port forwarding is what's necessary. I've never actually played the co-op in this, so I don't know why they have to use that. Like I don't know what is missing. Hey, look, a skeleton. All right, kill these, and let's level. Level up. All right. I have one attribute point I'm going to put into willpower for now. No, I'm going to put it into vitality for now. More hit points. And I can't get another skill yet, but I can put more points into the ones that I have. I want to up my dragon magic lore so I can upgrade those spells. And a little more in magic stabs would be nice so I can get more attack. Also, an earth elemental is trying to kill me. Stop it. Stop it. Quiet it. Thank you. Okay, now I have a point in dragon magic that I can spend. What can I get? I can upgrade the berserk form more, give it concentration, which makes it last longer, steal life, or I could have a shaman summon up elementals to beat me to death some more. Let's try to avoid that one. If we could, please. Thank you. All right. What about the eternal fire? I just got that. Hmm. Dragon Strike is interesting. What about my buff? Experience. That actually seems awesome. Let's get that. Just in case it doesn't automatically apply, let me go ahead and get rid of it and resummon it since it doesn't take anything. As you can see, there is actually no mana or anything like that. There are no resources. The only restriction to your ability usage is cooldown. Alright, so we are making our way... There, we're quite close now, very close in fact. Kill more kabalds. Sorry about my squeaky chair, it is very squeaky. I'll pick up your quest later, I will be back. I swear. I should probably activate the resurrection monolith over here, so I can get here quicker. But first, we're going to set things on fire, because that's always good. Yeah, I'm starting to get undead now, which is interesting. I haven't actually seen any besides in a few caves so far. All right, so this fire jumps from uh, enemy to enemy, but it also has a fairly long cooldown, it seems like. All right, yeah, that's actually pretty significant damage. It doesn't do any burst damage when it hits, but it spreads and does pretty good dot, so that's nice. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. All right. Almost there, I think. Wait, did I pass it? I did. How did I? What? All right. Now there's a monolith just down here. I'm going to go ahead and get that before I make the mistake of dying again. 
All right, activate this here monolith thingy. Oh, that also saves your game, and you can just F5. I switch it. It's actually not default F5. I switched it to F5, but that's not the point. You can quick save essentially anytime you want. It takes no time at all. It doesn't even lag the game when you do it, and I recommend you do it all the freaking time. I really want to get back there and turn in this quest. What are you? A horse trader, huh? Oh, I can get... Uh, yes, there are mounts. I forgot. But yes, there are mounts you can get. There are specific sort of special mounts for each uh, type of character you can play. I guess race. Hmm. I don't have the riding skill, but I suppose I can still use these. These are extremely expensive, though. Which I guess makes sense, because they are horses. I don't have the money for that. I do have a lot of loot. A lot of loot. Hmm. Let's sort that. Do I... Um, I'll probably use those and some gold to get a different one that I would like to have. Any weapons that I would like to use? Not especially. Get some attack speed. Okay. There is blacksmithing as well. You can sort of augment weapons, you know, Diablo style. There are sort of gym sockets and things like that and weapons that you can use. And other assorted things like that. I should probably use the tab map here. All right, how in the world do I get to where I want to actually be? That's a great question. Not through there, it seems. Crap. Uh, this would be a good time to speed up the video to about 200% and play the Benny Hill song, but I don't want to get sued. Alright. Let's go. Come on. There's the gate. You can do it. Alright. Going back around. I'd like to get a mount, but they are uh, a little rich for my blood. For right now, at least. I need to save up that money. It actually can take a bit of time to save up some gold. Just do lots of quests and you'll get there. Alrighty. Over there is where I'm supposed to go. Alright, yeah, I just walked right past it like a complete noob. What a surprise. Whatever that is, I'll take it. And through the beautiful path. And there's some enemies up here that I'll have to take care of. Okay. Definitely starting to like the mix of undead that's going on with the kobolds adds an interesting element because later on when they are higher level and there are more of them might have to employ some different strategies to actually get through it properly the game isn't necessarily easy there are two difficulties from the start bronze and silver I'm not sure if there is a gold difficulty but um, if there is you don't start with it unlocked maybe you have to beat the game once for it I'm not sure but in any event this has been sacred. Sacred to gold. I love to brag. Yay! Well done. You will have a link. Hello, you can teleport. I wish... Wait, if you could teleport, what could... Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Anyway, I will link you to, carry all that stuff? to, uh, to the, the Steam page in the description. And, um... I've got to get some loot dropped here after I kill this thug. Or defeat him, rather. Okay. Anyway, that has indeed been Sacred 2 Gold. You find it on Steam, look in the description, and uh, tell me if there are requests, as per what I talked about earlier, that you would like to, uh, like to state. I will look at them, I promise. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.